today's video we are going to talk about build sheets and specifically we're going to go over the build sheet on my 2020 challenger 1320 uh, we're going to go over it line by line because uh, some of it is kind of interesting uh, it, it's not exactly everything that you see on the window sticker so first of all uh, this build sheet that i'm using is available online um, it, anybody can get this build sheet for their car. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description. So what these build sheets are, uh, it's just kind of an overview of all the stuff on the car or truck or whatever vehicle you have. Uh, kind of similar to a window sticker, uh, but it has a little bit more info, some more specifics, some things that really you don't need to even know about. Uh, and again, they're all available online through Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep. Uh, they all have links for them. It actually doesn't matter which link you use. The other cool thing about this is you can actually go back and any vehicle you have, Chrysler, Dodge vehicle, pretty far back, you can input the VIN and you'll get your build sheet. So what you wanna do is, uh, I'll, the link that I have down bottom has my specific VIN for this car on it. So you can actually hit that link and see the build, my build sheet as I'm looking at it and what I printed out. Uh, but for your car, what you wanna do is just take out the, the VIN that's at the end of the URL and then put your VIN in there and you'll get your build sheet. So I actually put in a VIN from my 1993 Dodge Ram, uh, which I had a few videos a while back where I talk, kind of talked about my old Ram and the memories I had in that truck. Uh, but even that truck, 27 years old and the build sheet pops up. Let's go ahead and get started. Equipment listing. Uh, standard equipment, first up, monotone paint. 220 amp alternator, uh, 730 amp maintenance free battery, uh, line lock. We have not used that in this car yet. For those that don't know, it applies the brakes on the front tires and does not apply the brakes on the rear tires so that you could do a burnout without burning through your brakes on the, uh, the back, back wheels. Uh, now I've done burnouts in vehicles pretty much my whole life and just you hit the brake with one foot, hit the gas with the other, and spin your rear wheels, no big deal. Uh, never had any issue with it. It will probably wear the rear pads a little bit faster. Uh, in some extreme cases, you get some good wheel speed going depending on the brakes, they will start heating up. And I have seen some videos uh, at night where you could see the rotors start to glow from the massive amount of heat. Okay, so rain brake support, what it does is it's pretty interesting. When your windshield wipers are on, the car computer knows that and so what it does is it's thinking hey your wipers on it must be raining so your wheels are going to get wet so it'll apply a tiny bit of pressure to the brakes just enough to get the pads to get close enough to the rotors where they're not stopping you but it's wiping the rainwater off of the pads keeping them dry so that they perform better they break better and kind of makes sense uh, next up on the list is ready alert braking. That was another weird one I never heard about before. Uh, so basically ready alert braking, when you suddenly release the accelerator pedal, it will activate the ready alert braking. And basically what that does is the brake system then prepares itself for a panic stop. Because if you think about it, normal driving, you're driving, you're cruising, you let off that gas instantly, and then you slam the brakes if, you know, traffic comes to a stop ahead of you. So the system just kind of preemptively gets things ready. It kind of thinks like, okay, you let off the gas pedal so fast, you might be needing a panic stop. So it kind of prepare. Knockback mitigation. And according to a supervisor of vehicle dynamics for SRT, this was a while back, apparently Chrysler owns the patent for uh, knockback mitigation. So it's developed from the pad wiping software that dries off the brake pads when they're wet, which is why I just talked about the rain brake support. And it's new code that keeps the pads from being knocked back into the caliper under hard cornering. Next up, electronic stability control. That's been around forever on cars now. Okay, so hill start assist. When you're on a steep incline, the car will maintain a little bit of brake pressure for a little bit of time after you release the brake. Uh, to just kind of help you from rolling back when you're on a hill. Now, I thought this was weird because in automatic, I don't think it's as big of an issue. Maybe it puts a little bit more stress on the transmission. So I guess, talking about now, I can kind of see why it would be used. Put less stress on the transmission. Uh, I would normally think that would be a big feature for like a manual transmission. Next up, all-speed traction control. 
it detects wheel spin and will divert power, apply brakes, or whatever it does to make sure that you get maximum traction. Electronic roll mitigation. This was another interesting one I never heard of before. It anticipates the potential for wheel lift by monitoring the steering wheel input and the speed of the vehicle. So that has to do with when you're taking turns, corners, uh, and when we're talking about roll or lift, we're talking about side roll. So one side of your wheels coming up off the ground and rolling. It applies appropriate brake and may also reduce engine power to lessen the chance that wheel lift occur. Um, it can reduce the chance of wheel lift occurring during severe or evasive driving maneuvers. Cannot prevent it due to other factors such as road conditions. I, I do kind of wonder uh, for people that race on a track, does that possibly get in the way? Um, if you're taking a super hard turn, hard corner, um, will that thing start engaging because it's trying to prevent wheel lift? Um, hopefully it doesn't. Or I would guess cars like that, like the wide body scat packs, um, cars that are more designed for track racing, they have it, whereas I have a drag mode, they have a track mode. I do kind of wonder if that track mode disables systems like that because that would seem like a bad system to have for track racing. All right, now we have hydraulic assist brake booster. Uh, basically, it just assists the brakes. Brembo, four piston fixed caliper brakes. Uh, front passenger seat, because the 1320 with no options actually does not come with a front passenger seat. Active head restraints, so what'll happen in a case of a rear end, uh, the head restraint will pop up to kind of prevent your head from flying back, whipping back. And now we got rear 60-40 folding seat. Uh, again, the rear seat is optional in the 1320. Child seat upper tether anchorages, advanced multi-stage front airbag, center rear three-point seat belt. Just says that there's a seat belt in the center of the rear seat. So this is technically five passenger vehicle. Uh, base headliner module. We'll talk about modules in a little bit. So next up, supplemental front seat side airbags, supplemental side curtain front rear airbags. So we have two different types of airbags. We have the ones on the side of the seat, which pop out right here, and once the curtain ones pop out from up here. Floor carpet. <laughs> uh, I don't know any cars that don't come with floor carpet. I feel that's kind of a truck thing because trucks, you could have a floor carpet if you buy like the very most basic cheap work truck model, they'll actually have vinyl floors. Uh, trunk carpet kit. Carpets in a trunk. Again, I don't know if any trunks that don't have a carpeting in there. Sorry. Luxury front and rear floor mats. I love that they call them luxury. I don't know what's luxury about them. They're just regular floor mats. Floor console with armrest. Interior assist handles. That's these puppies right here. So your uh, oh shit handles basically is what they are. Cell phone storage. Uh, good question. I don't know what's... Th that's not self but that's like a coin holder. I think maybe they're talking about there's like netting here or maybe even this netting. Let's find out. Cell phone. Uh, it kind of holds it, I guess. Not very good, but it does. So let's say that's it. Illuminated cup holders. Powered by SRT engine cover. Those are those plastic valve covers uh, that in my oil catch can video, I actually took those off because uh, I, no, I don't really care for the plastic engine covers at all, personally. Anti-spin differential rear axle. All right, we're getting into some good stuff here now. It's gonna spin both rear tires. So when you do a burnout, you're gonna leave two tire tracks instead of just one. Without that, they call that an open differential. Solar control glass. This glass in here is solar controlled. What that means is it has some sort of UV film layer inside or it has some kind of special thing to kind of help protect against uh, UV rays. Rear window defroster, sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors, sun visors, illuminated vanity mirrors on both sides. Rear view auto dim mirror. At night when a car comes up behind you and they have their brights, this mirror will automatically dim itself. Power mirrors fold away. So they don't fold powered, but they do fold up. 
uh, remote proximity keyless entry. Uh, you've got this key, and on these challenges, on the handle, there's a little black button. So as soon as you're close by, you got the key in your pocket. You just kind of lift the handle, you can unlock it. Keyless entry. Uh, same thing. Sentry key theft deterrent system. There is a chip inside of this key. And inside the ignition is a reader that reads that chip. And it has to basically identifies it, knows that you have it, knows that you have the proper key. Air conditioning ATC with dual zone control. ATC is automatic temp control. Instrument panel. So let's talk about modules. We're going to see uh, modules a couple spots in here too. So the way assembly works, uh, some parts they break up into modules. So they, they assemble pieces of the car in different areas and then they take those assembled pieces uh, to some spot on the assembly line and then attach the assembled piece. This instrument panel being one of them. And in fact, I've got this really cool thing right here. Um, when I took delivery, I, I had them keep all the paperwork in the car and this was inside the glove box because this is kind of what's called a track sheet uh, so that when they're assembling it, there's a special section that do instrument panels. So they have this list of the glove box doors, the vents, the plates, panels, ra what radio assembly, the speakers, thermistor, sun, so all these sensors, like all these different things all have to get put together. So they actually assemble all this stuff separately then in the part on assembly line where they attach this in the car uh, there's actually a couple videos from Brampton and you'll see that this front panel is attached to this big arm and it swings through the door opening and they just bolt the whole thing in and that's kind of modular assembly that's uh, part of what makes assembly lines so efficient okay we need to start speeding through this uh, next up 180 mile per hour speedometer compass gauge it says northwest oh, wait now I'm going west <laughs> that compass gauge Variable intermittent windshield wipers. There was actually a movie made about the person that invented that and made a patent. The car company started using this and they were violating his patent and there was a big huge court case, I think, uh, where the family sued Ford. Specific, I think they might have sued Ford, Chrysler, everybody, because everybody had them. Uh, and they all had to pay them royalties. A dual node electric horn. I took off my plastic cover, so when you go in the engine, you can see the two different horns. There's a left and a right. A 12 volt center console power outlet. That's over here. Power accessory delay. That is just when you turn your car off, you know, your radio stays on for a little bit. That's all it is. Power trunk lid release. There's a button for your trunk lid. You don't need a key. Speed sensitive power locks. Once you hit, usually it's like 15 miles an hour. Your doors automatically lock. Power six-way driver seat, power four-way driver lumbar. Power windows, front one touch down. One touch down meaning you just press the button down one time and the windows roll down all the way. You don't have to hold the button. Uh, outside temp display and odometer, there it is. It's 96 degrees right now here in Dallas. Customer defined display monitor. This part right here, customer defined meaning you can actually define what it shows. Front passenger seat belt alert. One of the most annoying nannies out there, I hate it, especially on the passenger seat. Uh, LED tail lights, glove box lamp, front reading map lamps, that's these guys right here. Uh, and there's ones right here for that. Those are considered rear, although they're literally above the front seats, so they're not very rear, except front reading map, rear Curtis. Those are rear courtesy lamps. Trunk lamp, halogen headlamps, and automatic headlamps. See that little bubble right there, that dome? Some people don't realize that is the sensor for the automatic headlights. Daytime running lamps, park turn. Front fog lights, illuminated door pull handles. CHMSL lamp. CHMSL is center high mounted stop lamp, AKA your third brake light. Security alarm, uh, so when you lock and you leave, you'll see the little flashing red light. SRT front splitter, black grill with bezel. Uh, so that's the uh, 15 and up, had the 71 Challenger style front grill. Performance hood with heat extractors. What used to be the Hellcat hood and is now uh, on scat packs. Next up, body color fascias and then body color door handles. Here's what it is, body color. <laughs> grill badge, challenger script, RT badge. Those are both on a grill. Satin black rear spoiler. Not the performance, SRT performance, just the standard regular spoiler that's on the back. Active exhaust. There's a little, uh, like kind of like a butterfly valve in the exhaust pipes, one on each side. Uh, they kind of look like big overgrown washers with like a, like a donut with a hole in the middle. 
when you're wide open exhaust, they're full open, so there's no restriction. Uh, when you're just cruising, uh, they kind of close all the way, so they restrict the exhaust to just that little tiny opening in the middle of the washer. Uh, dual rear exhaust with bright tips, engine oil cooler, uh, speed control. That's the same thing as cruise control, which is these buttons right here. 18 and a half gallon fuel tank. Next up, Hellraisin, the color of the car. Uh, six premium Alpine speakers. Uh, that's the base speaker setup in here. I don't have the Armand Kardon. I didn't want it too much weight. Integrated window antenna. Uh, steering wheel mounted audio controls. That is, there's buttons back here. Pull this off for a moment just to show you. That's these things right here. So there is one on each side. I love these steering wheel audio mounted controls uh, because I love the fact that Chrysler and Dodge have kept them the same for decades. Uh, my 2002 Dodge Ram had these exact same style. They work exactly the same. Then we got 276 watt amplifier, uh, performance steering. I don't know what all is involved in that, but let's go to apps here, performance control. We do have different mode steering. I assume that's what it talks about performance steering. Ah, I don't know. Um, it is electric steering here, so no more power steering pumps, no more power steering fluid. Rear stabilizer bar, tilt telescope steering columns, uh, delete spare tire. A lot of cars nowadays don't come with a spare tire. You connect 4C with 8.4 inch display. That's this guy right here. The base ones I think have like a seven inch screen. And then there's the one with the nav, which we don't need that anymore. Park Sense rear park assist system. Uh, so those are just the sensors that beep. Park view rear backup camera. That's the camera in the rear spoiler. So when you put in reverse, the picture shows up here, which I do have to say the quality of the camera, it's gotta be about as crappy of a camera as cheap as they can get. Uh, Non-adjustable pedals, severe duty to engine cooling. Uh, that just means that severe duty, so the radiator, I think, is a better radiator to help cool more. Uh, AC refrigerator uses the new R1234YF refrigerant, not the R134 or anything like that. Universal garage door opener, that's this guy right here, so you can program your garage door opener. Tire pressure monitoring system display, black fuel filler door, non-locking fuel filler cap, Y buy label. I don't know what that is. That's like something for dealers, for like someone that says, why should you, why you should buy this car? English USA language is brake park interlock. In order to shift out of park, you have to press the brake. So it interlocks the brake in the park. Brake calipers, black. I just have the standard black calipers. A lot of people option out the red ones, which is like a $500 option. Dub plate interior accents. Up launch assist. Launch assist is not the same as trans brake. Okay, now we got a bunch of modules. Aluminum front suspension parts modules, rear fascia parts modules, front fascia parts module, brake and knuckle parts module, instrument panel parts module, front suspension, rear suspension, powertrain, tire and wheel parts module, lots and lots of modules. So that takes us back to what we talk about the instrument panel. They build them modularly. Same thing with doors. So interesting enough, I found these in the doors. They're again called track sheets. And tells you like garnish, what belt molding, map light, what panel inside, the speaker model. The important part here is the sequence numbers. So see this 3022710. I learned I, I have a connection that works on assembly line for FCA for Rams. And I said those last four numbers are the important ones. That's how they track all these things. So every module, every portion has these numbers and that's tied directly to this car. Obviously you have the VIN here too, which is specific, uh, but he said they don't really bother with the VIN as much because the VINs are not sequential. Uh, well, the VIN are sequential, but they're not assembled sequentially. Oh, and then we got two more front suspension, rear suspension, damper and parts module. Uh, built to US specs. So US has the EPA, different emission standards. Different countries have different emission standards. The left-hand drive too. So you know, this is a left-hand drive. Uh, there are some cases you will see right-hand drive cars being built in America, actually, and that is for the Postal Service. There actually are a handful of Jeeps built for America with right-hand drives, and they were built for mail carriers. Gross vehicle weight rating, 5,300 pounds. That is not how much the car weighs. That is the gross. That means the entire car, the weight of the car, plus the weight of the passengers and what it can carry. U.S. dealer retail being sold in the U.S. at retail. Zone 63 Dallas, 2020 vehicle specifications. So all specs are for the 2020 model year. 
Price class X, no idea, just whatever class of price is. Two door, because it's a coupe. Rear wheel drive, <laughs> obviously. LA 6120 vehicle family, so that is basically the body style. Like the old Challengers were E bodies. Vehicle order tracking, so that tracks the statuses, status code like D, D1, uh, I think E was frame, F is paint, uh, G is trim, I think, and then JB is like outfitter, KZ is once it's been built ready to be shipped. So all that stuff, I did a video about tracking this order when I gave an order status update. I actually talk about those codes, how I tracked it and all that. US specs label, so uh, it's probably just somewhere on this car is a label, maybe under the hood somewhere that says, hey, it meets US specifications. Texas shipped to and Texas sold to state code. Different states have different laws too, and the cars have to meet those laws. Most cars, they sell a front license plate bracket separately. It's usually a $25 option. Uh, I, did, I specifically left off because I don't want it on here, but Texas technically requires you have a front plate. Uh, so even though I didn't order it, they still throw it in. I think that's because they see that on this build sheet, it's a Texas state code and they, they show that it requires that plate, so they throw the bracket in there. All right, now we got to get to some optional equipment, which is actually tied to packages, like 1320 package. So uh, we have Houndstooth cloth performance seat. So performance just means they have a little bit extra bolstering on the sides. Black interior, front passenger seat cloth, rear seat option cloth. So again, those were options I had to pick because the 1320 stock only comes with driver's seat. If you got it without the rear seat, it would have a rear seat delete kit. 1320. <laughs> That's the whole reason I bought this car. It's a 1320 package, 1320 drag pack. Brake assist. That's kind of a nanny too, apparently. So brake assist, uh, from what I read, it, it, the computer learns your driving habits and get the brake system ready to assist you braking based on how it knows that you've been driving. All vehicles with ABS brakes, I kind of think that means like, hey, this car is ABS brakes. But all vehicles have ABS brakes. Am I wrong? I could be wrong. So I'm just saying that it doesn't matter what Challenger you get. Every single Challenger going down that line is going to get ABS brake. Rear armrest with cup holder seat, uh, leather wrap shift knob, all vehicles with cloth seats. Again, I don't get the all vehicles terminology, but whatever. 8-speed auto, 8HP 70 trans. So the 8HP 70 uh, is designed to handle the horsepower and torque of this powertrain. It can take a little bit more, like it's, I don't know the rating, but I think it's rated to take, handle like 550 torque or something like that. This out factory is 475. Auto stick automatic transmission. That's what I've been using this whole time. I've been using the auto stick. So you just pop it in manual, shift yourself. You can shift with this up to downshift and down to upshift, which that took me a moment to get used to. My Avenger just goes side to side. Um, or the paddle shifters. 309 rear axle ratio, so all 1320s have 309s. 230 millimeter rear axle, 6.4 liter V8 SRT Hemi MDS engine. So as a V8 engine, outputs 485 horsepower. It does unfortunately have MDS. Push button start, the button. Dodge performance pages, uh, drag mode performance pages. 1320 illuminated air catcher, so that's the uh, Headlights. So in the headlights, the inner one is an air catcher. Now these are sealed off. The only ones that have it open to the air intake is the Hellcat. Inside the catcher, it is lighted and there is a little angry 1320 Angry Bee logo inside of there, uh, which is pretty dang cool. GPS antenna input. I read that that just says that uh, the dash or the radio has an input for GPS antenna, whether you have GPS or not. Illuminated entry. I believe that's when you open a door, what people refer to as the puddle lights. Body color exterior mirrors. Front license plate bracket. I already talked about that with the Texas ship to code. Mopar black hood pin kit. That's the only other option I got on this car. It's those hood pins right there. I had them installed by factory. 1320 instrument panel badge. That's that one right there. 1320 fender badge. That's the, the emblems on the fenders. 50 state emissions. A, it just meets all 50 states. Exterior meters, mirrors with heating elements. Speed limited engine controller. It is speed limited, but it has a higher speed limit. Hellraiser, and again, I don't know why they show that paint code twice. All radio could be. It has a radio, duh. HD radio, so it has HD radio, 8.4 inch touchscreen display. Some of these are kind of redundant. The Apple CarPlay, Google Android Auto, USB host flip. The flip means that the USB can be used as uh, a, charge, a charger or for data. 
shark fin antenna on the roof for the Sirius XM satellite radio, uh, which comes with a one-year trial, including Guardian, uh, Media Hub, two USB and an aux, that's in here, integrated center stack radio, that just means the radio is integrated into the center. For GLT Wi-Fi hotspot, you can uh, pay for a subscription and use your car as a hotspot, but it's expensive and I don't know too many people would do it. My Dodge Alcantara Performance Steering Wheel, drag mode suspension, it's part of the 1320 package. It's what helps with the weight transfer, adaptive damping suspension, the drag radial tires, 275 4020s, unspecified tire brand. I think that's funny. These drag radials are Nexon and they were developed with Dodge. And you can buy Nexon drag radials just on your own. Uh, they're not like the Demon tires. Demon tires, you have to be a Demon owner to get. All aluminum wheels because the wheels are aluminum. Run by two piece wheel center caps, 20 by 9.5 low gloss black drag wheels. They are a little bit lighter weight. They also have a knurled bead inside, and that knurled bead kind of helps grab the tire to keep the tire from spinning on the rim. Uh, bright pedals, I forgot I even had these. So these pedals right now, they're just the plain black rubber, nothing fancy. The bright pedals are the silver ones with the black knobs in them. I do not have them on because they actually don't install those in the factory. The remote start system, tip start. I had to look up what tip start is. It used to be when you turn the key, you have to hold the turn as it's cranking until it starts up. So tip start, all you have to do is turn that key really quick. You could turn it like boom, just like that, and a car will start. Steering wheel mounted shift control, uh, that is what they refer to as the paddle shifters. NMC NHRA membership one year, that comes with the 1320 package. You get a one year membership. This tire service kit, because this doesn't have a spare, so what they have is a small little comp air compressor, uh, and it's actually a two sided, it is, so one side is an air compressor, the other side has like this fix a flat stuff. Front rear climate control outlets, integrated voice, co voice command with Bluetooth. So you have this uh, voice recognition, you press that button, you say, hey, uh, call so-and-so. If, if you have your phone attached with Bluetooth, it'll read your contacts and call whoever you want. Humidity sensor. So it's kind of like an anti-fog system to help your windows from steaming up. Trans brake. I cannot wait to use this. Uh, so it basically locks up your trans for takeoffs for drag racing. Uh, seems complicated from what I've seen on these cars, but I can't wait to try it out nonetheless. One year serious XM radio service. For details, visit driveuconnect.com. Why is that on the build sheet? I have no idea. Um, same thing for more info, call this number. No idea why. Manufacturer statement of origin. Uh, that's actually the part of your window sticker where it talks about what percentage of your car parts came from Mexico, what percentage came from US Canada, where it was assembled. Eight additional gallons of gas. Then you have spring, left front, left rear, right front, right rear. Like the more detailed build sheets will actually have uh, I think three or four digit codes that kind of ties into part numbers and tells you which springs. This isn't as detailed. You can get that more detailed one. You can't do it online. You actually have to uh, easiest way I think is either contact Dodge or Mopar or just go to your service manager at your dealership. I think they can print it out too. Customer preferred package to 2DG, so that's like just one of the standard or dealer option, dealer ordering options. Uh, 24G means it's the RT Scat Pack 6.4 MEV8. That's the base model that the 1320P is added on. Scheduled E to C tracking, just as tracking. Sold vehicle, because I ordered it, it's a sold vehicle. It's not a dealer order. Special scheduling condition seven. The conditions have different ratings for their order of importance, of their priority of going to through the line. Uh, seven seems to be fairly common, so I don't know how high a priority seven is exactly. Then we have distribution services tracking. I believe that's for shipping, uh, which I have vehicle shipping orders, so I think that's what that is. Easy order. That has to do with like the dealer and how they order it, to order it. Status D1 to D1 forward. So I think that has to do with this car bounced around. It went D status, then D1, and back to D. And then it went to D1, then we had the plant shut down for COVID, and I think it did D1 to D1, stuff like that. United States Region Group and NAFTA Region. NAFTA is North American Free Trade Agreement. I think that has more to do with like accounting and the bookkeeping books and all that. So that's it, that comes to the end of the build sheet. And this, is the build sheet from a 2019 1320. So just like my annoying differences, this person got a SRT performance spoiler and the um, red brake calipers. 
Uh, I printed this up because I want to see what the difference was between this and the 2020. I had a comment one time, someone asking uh, what the difference is between the 2020 and 2019. And going through here, a couple items are in different spots, but for the most part, it's they're identical. This was kind of a rough video. Maybe next time I might do this video sitting down at a desk. So if you have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, again, a lot of that stuff was pretty general, basic knowledge, everybody knew. But there were some interesting things I hadn't, I never knew about until I looked it up and saw it on here. So hopefully you got some good information on it. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. Um, I would hate doing long videos right now. I try to keep them shorter. Um, I definitely have some editing. Hopefully I get a good edit on this. So. Uh, if you've hung with me this far, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.